Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Twinkle Movies Club. This is your girl, Twinkle, and I'm here with Twin. You. And um, so, okay, this week our movie uh, was Blue Story. So, why did I pick this movie? Um, Blue Story, I, I love British movies. Jesus. I love, like, Blue Story is like a British gangster movie. So, I love British, like, hood movies. I don't know why, but I, I truly love them. So, I, someone referred me to the movie and, you know, I'm like, okay, let me, let me check it out. I watched it. And I'm like, yep, this is a go. I mean, <laughs> simply because you love these British accents and all that stuff like that. Yeah, I was course. skeptical about the movie at first because <laughs> I know how you do. You know, you love these British movies, even though you put me on the good show, Top Boy, you know. Exactly. I, lo I love that show. So, all right, I'll take, figure out I'll take a good look. Well, I like the movie though. Okay. So. All right, great. So let's go into a little background for this movie. Um, so our director was Ratman, and he was also the writer. So Ratman is um, like a British rapper, um, and I guess he um, – I, I really haven't heard his music, but I – you know, it throughout this uh, movie here, he's like rapping um, kind of like at – you know, there's like a scene and then he raps like what's going on to kind of fill in the gap before the next scene take place. It was pretty cool. Yeah, he gives background stories and just little fill in the gaps type stuff like that. So it was all right. I mean, ugh, ugh. all right, we go get into that <laughs> later. <laughs> all right. So the release year, um, I believe was was released in 2019. I think 2020 it came to the U.S. Um in uh is playing on hulu um and our actors we had michael ward as marco ratman as himself so like i said he was the guy that was rapping in between scenes um there was uh steven step i would say that stefan abula uh, he played timmy and then there was eric uh kofi uh, uh, I, 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 these names are hard. <laughs> he plays Swisher. Um, and Kelly Best. And Kylie he, Best. Yeah, and he played Killy. Ugh. No, no comments on that character. Jeez. Yeah, we're going to get into that. Right. All right. So before we go over um, our thoughts, a little overview of the movie, I do have to give you these uh, everybody's AKAs. Okay. So Marco. AKA Bricker. So you might hear either or as we're talking. Um, his best friend was Timmy, AKA Young Matter. Then there was Switcher, AKA, well, he didn't have AKA. <laughs> he was Marco brother. Um, then there was Leah. She was Timmy girlfriend. Um, there was Kyron, AKA Killy. Um, he was Timmy primary school friend. And then there was matter i don't think he had a name before that or did no. he i can't remember but it was matter and he was timmy like street mentor yeah and also killy's friend too all right yeah. so um this story was described to be like the british boys in the hood um so what were your thoughts on the movie i think the movie was pretty good you know my boy rap man he killed it with the directing and the writing I mean, I didn't so much like the rapping, but it I, I but I understand why he did it because it filled in a lot of the blanks and stuff like that. So I thought it was okay with the rapping, but the movie all around was still good, if you ask me. You know, he had a lot of things going on, a lot of betrayals or unforeseen betrayals, and just a lot of ups and downs of the movie. You know, you thought one character was gonna be the good guy, turned out to be the bad guy. Somebody you thought was friend turned out to be a foe, you know. And me as a writer, I I appreciate the ups and downs of a of a movie like this. So, right. What and do you think? I you know I enjoyed the movie because there was so many fine British men up there, <sighs> and I mean it's so much eye candy. Like oh my, I think I got cavities just watching it. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Like I don't know, but no, it really. Like I said, I just, I love these hood movies. But no, no, it, it did have, at the end, he was trying to 
um, put out a positive message about, you know, street gangs, you know, so it, it, it had a, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like the conflict was good, but it, it showed you how, you know, these gangs aren't really what's up. Like, no. Well, well to go to what you're saying, I think it showed how street gangs, like being in, being from the hood and being in the streets like that, and going like gang wars and stuff like that, playing that gunplay and all that, nobody really wins right, out of this situation. Right. And you'll see as you uh, seen the end of the movie, nobody wins out this situation. Everybody was either dead or in jail by the time this movie was over. And it's crazy to me of the people that died and people that went to jail, you know, and some they only got what 30 years for killing somebody and stuff yeah. like that. So it London was, cray cray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I heard that too. The front of London streets is crazy. They got like specific kind of gun laws and stuff like that. They can't really have guns, and, and you know, they still get their hands on guns, but they bury them out somewhere else. And then when it's time to put in work, shoot somebody, you know, they go pick them up, and you know, <laughs> yeah, and you know, and that is that's crazy. Now that I think about it, you know, like in America, having you know our gun laws. Um, you know, if you want a weapon, go get your gun permit, you know, then go purchase your gun. They're um, not being able to have a weapon. And then criminals, like these are like street guys and they have gangs, you know, I mean guns. And it's like, okay, but the normal civilian, you know, the, your regular citizen is hard to, you know, obtain a weapon. But, you know, your local drug boy down the street got one it's kind of crazy like i i kind of want to keep my gun rights here in america like we I, do we want to be a place like london but sure. anyways um so let's go into um character development yeah so we're, we're gonna kind of break down these characters um it's a lot to unpack with this um movie so um what we're gonna go over what we think about each character to kind of get a feel because we do not agree yep, <laughs> at all. Definitely not. Oh, how this story ended. So, all right. So, uh, Marco, what was your thoughts on Marco, a.k.a. Bricker? Okay. Marco, he seemed like a a good friend. You know, there was times in the beginning of the movie where Marco took up for Timmy. And there was also time Timmy took up for Marco. You know, they, so the base of the story, they from rival hoods. But they was friends. So Marco's brother was like the head of the gang. And Timmy, he just lived in the neighborhood, you know, and he knew somebody from the gang. So they but they was friends, you know, and Marco's brother used to tell him not to hang around Timmy or you shouldn't be over at Timmy's house. You know, we got beef with these guys and all that. So, I mean. Marco, Marco seemed seemed like a good guy from what I seen at first. He seemed like a good guy. He seemed like a a cool friend, you know. Somebody he had his friends back, you know, protecting his friend from these other gangs that try to mess with uh mess with Timmy. The being from he's from where he was from Peckham. No, no, no. Timmy no. was from um. Oh, oh, he was at Deport or somewhere. Louis said but he, the, he was from somewhere else. The name of the gang that where Timmy lives is Ghetto Boys, and where Marco lived it was the Peckham. Pe, uh, Pe, Peckham. <laughs> 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 I can't even say it like that. They're like Puckham Boys, Puckham, <laughs> you know, because they got these British accents with these kind of, but they speak a little, little patois, a little Jamaican in it, mixed with it, and all that stuff. So they say teens instead of things, you know what I'm saying. They say boom, and all that crazy stuff. So, <laughs> but Marco seemed like a good guy. I mean, what do you think? I think Marco was. I, I, I first of all, Marco he he was cute. I just want y'all to know. I thought he was a little bit attractive. But anyways, but <laughs> but first, I felt like he was a loyal friend. Um, with his time with Timmy, even though his brother Switcher was. Um, you know, this high ranking gang guy for, you know, the local neighborhood gang, he still, you know, took up for his friend, um, 
or you know and he pretty much had to continue to explain it to his brother like yo this is my friend he's not in a gang and even though he lives in another neighborhood still like this is my boy you know and if i'm cool with him then you should be cool with him i mean he didn't say that but kind of like what you know his thing his interaction with his brother so his brother kind of let him slide with hanging out with the rival gang member well timmy wasn't a gang at that point but um i feel like marco really loved timmy as a brother um because him and timmy were the same age they pretty uh, they weren't in gangs so unlike his older brother doing all that gang stuff he has someone that he could you know go to the mall with or go talk the girls you know talk about girls um you know just doing young stuff without having to worry about you know wearing a bandana and not going on this side of the neighborhood getting shot and all the other crazy stuff um i think marco was very very loyal like definitely so what about timmy uh, I can't stand Timmy. Oh, oh my God. God, Timmy. This is where we disagree. So, all right. So Timmy, um, my issue with Timmy was I felt like Timmy wasn't loyal at all. I felt like Timmy was using Marco as a pass to, I, I felt like he did love him. At, well, I felt like he was cool with him. I felt like Marco loved Timmy. However, Timmy was cool with Marco. <sighs> And and I think that that made a difference when when we will get to it when you know situation happened. Um, I, I, I can't agree with that. I can't. <laughs> Why not? I, can't. I gotta stop you right there. I'm sorry. Why not? I can't agree with that. Why not? Because just like Marco took up for Timmy, mm -hmm. Timmy took up for Marco. So they they at the beginning of the movie, the love was seemed very very mutual mutual. They had the same love for each other. That's my boy. I got his back no matter what. So I feel like they was on the same page, at, at least at first. At first, remember, Timmy was in love with Leah. He he loved Leah since they was kids. Mm -hmm. They was children. He met her when they was younger, and he always had love for Leah. And then when he finally had a chance to make him his girlfriend, whatever you know, she kind of took a little bit of precedent over that, which. A real man will understand your your old lady got to take precedent over your friends. But that's your bro. It it like okay. So, so with we that, talk, we talking bros over hoes right now, right? Yeah, because with that situation, it's like that's your bro. Well, not necessarily your bro. Like that. Like okay, Marco was going to Timmy's house eating food. Like he called his mom auntie. Like that. He viewed him as his brother. Like Timmy wasn't calling Marco brother bro. <laughs> so because well, because. Uh, <laughs> Timmy knew he wasn't welcome at Marco's house like that because of where he was from. Not because he was part of the game, just uh, just because where he was from, where he lived. Exactly. So that's why I feel that Timmy didn't have the love for Marco that Marco had back to him. Because when Timmy went, into, when Marco, when Marco went to Timmy territory, Marco felt safe and welcome due to family or his homeboy, whatever. But he got a whole game back in, back in him. <laughs> but I'm just saying, but when when Timmy was in Marco territory, like he just was so questionable of Marco loyalty. I don't know. That's how I felt. I, I didn't like Timmy. I'm sorry. I didn't like him. So Killy. Oh my I Killy. can't stand now. I that, oh my god, I couldn't stand him. That we agree on because Killy obviously was a backstabbing dude even though he tried to take up for for timmy later on in the movie and you know tell him like because matter started talking about his girl and stuff like that so he couldn't really he couldn't really have that you knew matter was wrong when he said something about his dead girlfriend you know so mm -mm. killy he showed that he was a a good game member but as all game members they probably eventually turn on you they go turn on you and betray you to get you get you shot or they're gonna turn stakes evidence on you. That's no. how game members do. No, that is not. That's not how game. That's fake game member, and that's what Killy was. Killy was not. Killy had no loyalty. He only worried about himself. He wanted to. He wanted people to respect him. However, no one's gonna give him respect because he was a joke. Like, <laughs> yeah, like mean. he he was doing way too much. Like he gave us. How you give yourself your own nickname? Like that's not how that works. Like you're supposed to earn your name from the street, not I'm surf proclaimed Killy. Like please, I uh, I don't know. I couldn't stand that boy. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like him too much, but I f felt like at first he had the gang's interest at heart, but then towards the end he started to get jealous 
when Timmy actually joined the gang and Matter took him under his wings, called him Younger Matter and all, all that stuff like that, T uh, Killy got jealous. He got real jealous. So, and that's why the events at the end happened the way they did because Killy is a, a jealous motherfucker. And you can't name one gangster dude that's in the streets like that that ain't jealous. They all jealous. No, it's not. I oh, mean, that's how, that's how the streets what kind of streets you in. I don't see I don't see a little bit of streets. I don't see just a little bit. Just a little bit. I ain't from the streets, but I know street dudes. Man, you know no, I can't. I... Some dudes gonna actually get jealous. You you never seen somebody you see it all the time. Watch Force for uh first 48. You see it all the time. Somebody jealous and you end up getting the man killed or killing him himself, or they they start snitching. It happens all the time. But you see, but that's my thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, we, I can't even give Killy that much respect because me personally, I felt like from the beginning, Killy was playing both sides. So, all right. So for those who didn't watch the movie and listening ahead of time, Killy was part of the Ghetto Boys um, gang. Okay. So the Ghetto Boys gang, um, that was, Timmy lived on that side of the neighborhood or that side of town or whatever. Um, so him and Timmy were like friends, uh, when they were younger in primary school. Um, but then Timmy mother sent him to, across the tracks in a sense to where Marco lived to go to school there. Cause she wanted him to get away from bad, ex um, bad exposures or whatever. She didn't want him to get into mixing the whole gang thing. Right. So Killy, however, it seems like he kept having information on the whereabouts of people in the opposite gang. And I'm like, how do you know so much if you ain't all if you ain't over there? Right. Like, where are you getting this information from? And what happens at the end, um, Killy, he ends up setting his homeboy Matt, uh, setting up matter and setting up Timmy to get killed. Right. He ended up setting him up. And I'm like, to me, he was never loyal to that game. He just I don't know what it, he he wanted respect, but well, you heard him say he was like, "I'm." You made him. He was in the game five minutes, and you made him younger matter. I want to be younger matter. So he was mad that the leader of the game, uh, he brought somebody. Uh, he brought Timmy in, uh, and he uh, matter made him younger matter. So like the, his next in line and stuff like that. Well, tr true. And he also said that he was like he's always been living in Timmy's shadow in a sense so it's like see so like you know i can't remember exactly what he said but pretty much he always been living his shadows since primary school so i'm like even with that it's like that's before y'all was in gangs like you just had a vendetta against this guy you hated this dude yep. so i'm like the everything he did was calculated i don't think he ever truly loved had love for timmy it was calculated and what made me angry about that was um, in the beginning, um, Timmy mother, she was telling him to leave Killy alone. He's going to get her and get him in trouble. And at the end, Killy was the one who got him murdered. So, that's true. and I'm like, he chose, and it made me kind of mad with Timmy. It was like, he kind of chose Killy, like as he was more loyal than he did Marco. And... I'm like, Killy, you know, in the end was the one who set you up. I mean, don't get me wrong. Marco kind of burnt him alive, but I mean, <laughs> Killy was the one who set him up. So it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, Killy, like I said, he's a natural street dude. So either nobody stays loyal that long, you know what I'm saying, in the streets. Nobody. So either because... You got two choices. You always hear this every time. When you're in the streets, you got two choices. You're going to end up dead or in jail. So Killy was looking out for Killy. He was selfish, but ended up being selfish. But I think later on, he was still loyal to the game. Killy, yeah. Killy was, no, Killy did what Killy had to do for himself. Like, for example, when he went and jumped, like jumped Marco. He knew jumping Marco was going to cause conflict because Marco is going to think, you know, oh, how your man's, you know what I'm saying, jumping me? Like, why they, why they beating me up? Where where was you at? So did you set me up? So I felt like Killy knew what he was doing. I think all of this was calculated. Well, I want to see. Well, 
not the whole movie. I uh, we know definitely he calculated the last part of the movie you to get Timmy and Matter killed, but I wouldn't say the whole part. Because remember, he took off for um for Timmy. Like I said, he, he took off for Timmy. No, because he was fake. Because like, okay, like there was a scene. All right, before I even get to that scene, a oh, woman well, never. Okay, so there was a scene where um. Uh, matter was like talking to Timmy and he was like, we got to go do something or whatever. And he was like, who's side your own? And then he was like, it's okay. Stay where you want to stand. And like almost everybody in the crew went over there where Timmy was and Killy was still standing with matter. And I'm like, exactly. Cause that shows you where your loyalty is. His so loyalty was with matter, right? Right. So why did he try to get him killed later on in the movie? He wasn't trying to get Matter killed. Yes, he did. He pulled his head out of the gun to Matter's head. Well, no, no, no. Because he had an argument with Matter. <laughs> he he kind of gave Matter the chance to like, like, I don't want to have to kill you. You know, we can we can do this together. It's just that I need him dead. Like well, he that argument is about pure jealousy, from what I heard. It's like I was supposed to be younger matter. This man was in the game for however long, and you made him younger matter. That was supposed to be me. That's like the second in command and stuff like that. So he, he got jealous. He got jealous at the end. As far as playing the part in all the earlier stuff, I don't see that. I don't see that. I feel like he said, I feel like he said um, them up when, okay, so when uh, my boy Marco, when they spotted Marco at the club and Switcher had the bat and he, you know, he hit Matter in the head and was about to shoot Matter. I felt like Killy set that up because, again, how do Killy keep knowing where they at? It's like, how you keep getting 401 on these people? Because you in the streets. Man, please. So everybody else in the street, but nobody else get 401. But every single time, Killy knows where they at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, he was, nah, he was playing both sides. All right. Well, uh, well we on the <laughs> fence about that. Killy. I you say he playing both sides the whole time. That's what you're saying. Yes. And I say that he was only playing both sides to when he set them up to get killed. And from from what I seen, it's no real evidence. I know you thinking deeper into it, but <laughs> you going you doing it like a stream deep dive into it. But I don't see no real evidence of him setting these people up until the end. Mm -mm. Until the end. Cause ain't nobody died. I mean, who got hurt when or uh, the situation at the club when um Matter got hit over the head with the bat by uh Marco's brother? Who got hurt? Only Matter got hit over the head, but Timmy was the one that got, ended up getting the upper hand. He stabbed Marco's brother in the back, which paralyzed him. And if the gun did jam, he would have killed Marco right then and there. So how how what evidence do you have? Going because to court of law? because okay, so Switcher, they was like okay okay, so Killy was like he knew where Switcher was, so when they get to the club or whatever, Matter was the one who spotted um, Marco. Right. So then um, Timmy, because he's just like so ready to kill this guy, jumps out of the vehicle start chasing this boy down, you know, starts beating him up. But my thing is, where where does Switcher automatically come from with a bat? He went to the club with a bat? Because they sure ain't got no cars. So he went to the, I mean, well, I guess they got cars, but they were, they, he wasn't in no parking lot. Oh, so you saying like he knew he was there. Yeah, he, mm. I felt like he wanted to get find to find a way to get Timmy Merck at that point or something to happen to Timmy so Timmy could be away from matter because at that point, because remember, I think, if I'm not mistaken, before that, uh, a couple of scenes before, they were on the bus messing with the young kids on the bus. And Timmy was pretty much like, yo, leave him alone. And Kelly was like, yo, like you Mother Teresa, like what, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he didn't like that. And then he pretty much listened to him. Right. So I think that was a part to kind of get them set up. Because if matter's gone and and Timmy's gone, then Killy felt like he was going to take over. But yeah, because I guess that kind of made him third in command, especially after the they had that argument and uh, they kind of split it up between Matter. Only like three people was on Matter's side, but everybody else was on Timmy's side. So when the game came back together, I get I guess you would say he was third in command. So he was jealous, so because he was supposed to be second in command. So if anything that happened to matter and timmy he would run the game 
Right. And then it really, he knew that Timmy didn't care about running the game. Timmy was just there for revenge. He only joined the game so he can have extra manpower to um, go well, and kill Marco. That's all it was. Right. Because he couldn't do it on his own. Marco, a.k.a. Bricker, he had a whole game behind him because of his brother. So he needed backup to, right. to kill Marco. Uh, I mean, okay. Killing so. you suck. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so matter. What what do you think about matter? I think matter was a older version of Killy because matter was jealous as well. Like he wanted everyone to respect him and he kind of tried to use fear as a way to get people to respect him, but they still viewed him as a joke. And when Timmy came, it was more logical with thinking then you know people started to respect timmy more and listen to him so i felt like killy was i mean matter was like an older version of killy well i wouldn't say matter was an older version of killy because he wanted respect because he you heard him say when he was made uh timmy mad and he um came to his house and talked to him he was like man i put years out here in these streets you know what i'm saying so he felt like he deserved all the respect that is due to a leader of a gang. You know what I'm saying? Because he put time in the streets. He put in plenty, plenty work. You know, you know, shot dudes and all this kind of stuff like that. So he felt like he deserved his respect. So I, I don't see him as a young Achilles, like somebody that's out for himself, as is gonna be jealous. He he was a bottom dude. And remember, like, even though they had that little him and Timmy had a little argument at the end. A matter was the only one there trying to save his life. He tried to save Timmy. Well, because I think matter matter could relate to Timmy because they both lost someone that they cared about. Right. You know, because remember, matter lost his friend Gillis and Timmy lost Leah. So when they had that heart to heart in the car a little bit, um, I felt like they kind of connect a little bit. And when he decided to throw that in that guy's face, because he knew it was going to make him mad when they had a little argument. Um he knew he had to go back and apologize because it was wrong. Right. You know, what he said about, you know, his girlfriend dying or being murdered or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like matter, he, he's on a, I respect him a little bit more than I do Killy. I don't respect Killy at all. But I do feel like there still was jealousy. Um, everyone was jealous of Timmy. Yeah, a lot of people was jealous of Timmy. Because he got more respect and he ain't put that kind of work in on the streets like everybody else did. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really blame people for being, well, people in the gang that was jealous of him. You know what I'm saying? Well, Timmy had nothing to live for. Like, the, the, his only purpose on earth was revenge. So it didn't, he, he, <laughs> he was only going to take risks that was going to get him closer to killing Marco because he was angry. Right. Remember, so he had a lot invested into it with him and his girl. They took each other's virginities and all this stuff like that. So I can understand Timmy, but matter, I think he was straight up loyal to the streets. You know, he was and he was loyal to everybody in his gang. So the the dude that died, you know, he he loved him for it. And remember, he got into that argument with the other dude and talking about gang violence which was we gonna get into but dude was right i mean all that shit was for nothing you know and if he would have been smarter maybe that dude would have never died you know yeah 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 matter he was loyal to the street i can give him that that's the only thing he worried about and killy was loyal to himself (laughs) (laughs) and timmy did not have any he was loyal to leah so he wanted revenge for her death. And I guess Marco, he was loyal to Timmy, but after a while it turned and he was loyal to his brother, Switcher. I think he was more loyal to Switcher after him and, and Timmy fell out, you know? Yeah, because he realized blood is thicker than water. So at, at some point, I mean, his loyalty should have always been into his household, into his brother versus... Um, his homeboy. Yeah, but that don't mean you go against your friends like that. First of all, Timmy came after him, <sighs> so he had no choice. <laughs> well, you you go ahead. You hold on to that shit real quick. 
because we're going to get into this on this next segment. We got a whole nother segment coming up. Y'all stay tuned. We are about to take a, a little commercial break. So stay tuned. And we are back for part two of Twinkles Movie Club. Uh, okay, so let's switch up the conversation. Let's talk about some of this weird, I believe it's weird, London slash Patois Jamaican accent. So they had some like weird slang words. Some of you had to go through like context clues to figure out what the hell was really going on because you didn't understand what they were saying. So what are some of your favorite slang words? Uh, so from the sh- movie, um, oh my days! <laughs> I don't know. I loved it. I'm like, okay, okay. I I should add that in to my you know daily conversation. Well, let me point out, you got a soft heart for these Brazilian accents, these half Jamaican, half uh, British <laughs> accents. You got a soft heart for this because every movie that you recommend to me. It's something based off of in damn London, uh, fucking whatever, somewhere overseas. So you got a soft heart for this. So at first, well, sometimes I really can't take your word, but <laughs> I, this accent, and it's the same kind of accent that they use in the other TV show that you put me on, Top Boy. You know, I think I think it's kind of cool. I I kind of like it. You know, so they pussy old <laughs> pussy old instead of just somebody calling somebody a pussy. You know, you got they a pussy or whatever. <laughs> I yeah, thought it was crazy. Or, or what the I'll allow it. Oh no, yeah. So like, um, <laughs> allow it, man. Allow it. They said man a lot too, which is fucking Jamaican. Like no, he's like he's trying to he's trying to you know uh, come into your come into your room. Allow it, man, or allow it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Allow it, man. Oh, I heard somebody said, "Don't watch it too." Uh, I don't. It, 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 the mess is great. I don't know. It's cool though. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. I like the mix. You know, it, it makes Jamaican. When somebody talks like patois or Jamaican, it makes it sound cooler when they got a, like a little British accent. You know. Furthermore. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, like, have you ever heard somebody else? In the actual conversation, say furthermore, if you wasn't doing them a presentation or something like that, Look, and they say it on they first of all, these are like hood people. I'm like, okay, that's what we're talking about. Speaking at the Queen's English, <laughs> man. So, uh, wet them up. Now, I heard this before. Now, if I, I don't know, just so. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of weird. No, I mean, gro- growing up in South Florida, I heard, I heard that when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? They was like, well, they, I, they wet this boy up. You know, they wet him up. You know what I'm saying? So that's not a surprise to me. I don't even still don't even know what that means. What does wet that mean? Up, that mean like wetting your shirt, like with blood. Oh. So if somebody say wet, oh, like he, uh, he went out there, he was in the streets or whatever, and he got wet up. You know what I'm saying? He... They wet him up, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That means they either shot him or stabbed him. Either way, he probably did. You know what I'm saying? They wet his shirt up with blood. <laughs> he wet up. Like, mm-hmm. when you get blood on his shirt, your shirt wet. You wet up. That's. I mean, that's what it means. I mean, it was a, a form of, of violence. That dude, if somebody got wet up, they was hurt. They probably did. Well, the one I didn't like, that I thought the peg... Ping. ping. Oh, yeah. Ping. She's ping, mom. She's ping. Yeah, I was like, it's so weird. That, nah, I can't try to add that into my little conversations. <laughs> you can't add that because <laughs> you ain't going to say it like them. You can't add that shit to your conversation. <laughs> These slang words are not for you, big dog. Why not? No, I could be like, man, I was watching this music video and yo, she was ping. You don't even say that. <laughs> you can't say that. That shit don't work out. Man. That shit don't work out at all, bro. All right, so we got uh younger, younger. There's like younger or the youth. Oh yeah, youth. Youth. I think I'm gonna start really using that though. The youth. 
you know, like, all right, y'all, you sit down somewhere. Yeah, you listen. Yeah. <laughs> Just subscribe, younger people and shit. And, but me being from Florida, we call our younger people JIT. Hmm. Yeah, J I T JIT. That's weird. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where did that come from? That's like, like weird. Bro, bro you a JIT. You a JIT. Like, uh, like you see some, you in your 20s and you got some young 14 year old trying to fight you, which happens all the time. But you got some young dude trying to fight you. You're like, bro, get your ass out of here, jit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, well, I mean, now you can replace it with younger. I, I can't say young. Or youth. Get well, out of here, youth. So uh, what's another one? Slag. Oh, yeah. Slag was another one that I guess they call a hoe out here in the streets and all that, you know. Your slag girlfriend. But yeah, she's slag. <laughs> she's slag, you know. I'm like, like what? I I I I don't know. I don't know where to get these words from, but it was definitely entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely entertaining. But no, I have to admit, I had to have the subtitles on because I, yeah, I I had to in order to understand some of it. And that that is shocking, being that all these little British movies you watch, <laughs> British little gangster movies you watching, and they speak the same fucking language. It's that too you still- fast. I'm from the south. Like I need, they gotta slow it down. Yeah, I understand. I'm I, like, what, what what they say? I guess that makes sense. I mean, but by far, in my personal opinion, my favorite British slash make it saying slang word is in it. <laughs> oh yes, I do like that, it. That was my favorite. I do one. like that. It's like, but you know that in it. <laughs> like it's isn't it? Well, it's uh, like, <laughs> don't you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do like that one. In it, in it. Like, you ain't calling nobody ignorant. You just like in it. Like, isn't it? I mean, that that was my favorite word. It's like, yeah, we did that in it. <laughs> I can't even remember what he's supposed to say. First I can't. Of all, I don't know because I they were just throwing that at the end of anything. It's yeah. like they'll finish a sentence and throw it. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Like, what context are we supposed to use this? Uh. I get the same way, same way we use, isn't it? That but I, I don't I be believe. like, hey, come eat this pizza, isn't it? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no justification. I think they're just throwing it in well, there. Well, that's I think you throw it at the end when you ask a rhetorical question. So if there's any British listeners out there that can explain when you use that word, please let me know. Yeah. I would I need to know. Hit us up on twinkle, uh, twinkleberry.com and submit your little British little slang words and tell us what all this, like, in it mean. Because I think I'm right, you know? I mean, I think you use it's, – it's, it's part of a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question. No, because I, I watch too many British movies, and it's like they'll just say a sentence and say that at the end. Like, I think it's more of, like, you understand – well, no, because like when you put it at the end of a sentence, like uh, when you say "ain't it," no, I know. I think it's more like do you like you understand? Like you understand, right? Like you know what I mean? Like okay, um, I'm about to go over here and get this car in it. Like I'm about to go over here and get this car. Don't you understand? Like you, you follow me? Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all let us know, okay? Yeah, hit us up online so we can figure out figure this out because. Me and her gonna sit here and argue about this shit till the end of days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into another part that well, that was a big theme into the movie, which was revenge and revenge being part of like street violence and gang violence and all that stuff like that. So yeah, it seemed like everybody in this movie wanted some type of revenge, and I think that's why everything kind of went downhill. Um, so we're going to kind of go over like <laughs> where we saw this, you know, who was looking for revenge and, t- and talk, discuss, see if it was justified. So, okay. So matter wanted revenge for Gillis. That was his homeboy that got shot early on in the movie. So he wanted revenge for him. So you think he, uh, which his, um, what Marco's brother switcher had shot him and killed him. Mm-hmm. So it was shot him in the back too. So do you think he was justified for wanting revenge for 
Switcher. Even though Switcher knew exactly the kind of life he lived. No, well, not Switcher. I mean, Gillis knew exactly the kind of life he lived. He was out there just shooting, and he turned his back to celebrate shooting shooting at one of his rival gang members and stuff like that, and he ended up getting shot in the back. No. I, I Okay, so I feel like Matter should have just took... Well, I don't want to say take the L on that, but I feel like there shouldn't have been no revenge because, I mean... Okay, so they went to um, that the other, one. yeah, to the other gang's turf, and your boy dies. So at that point, you like, oh, I want to get revenge on the other gang. No, you need to get revenge on yourself because you you made that call. You told everybody, yo, let's go to the other gang turf. So you went there, and one of your boys didn't come back home. That's on you. So that's how I felt about that one. So I felt like that wasn't justified. Well, because he calling the shots. And remember that he had that argument with the other dude, and he was like, "We don't think we should go down there right now. Right about now, it's broad daylight, and you going out there try to shoot them boys, and right. all this bad stuff gonna happen." So yeah, because they thought it was gonna be a setup. It was like, "Yo, this is a setup," and it was like, "This is a setup." They want us to go over there, and he's like, "Oh no, we going over there." He was like, "You either with me or against me." So of course his crew went with him, and then that boy died. I'm like, "That's on you. You made that call." You knew that was bad timing. You know what I'm saying? You took your boys over there and you want to get mad at someone else. That was your fault. Uh, you don't agree? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't necessarily his fault because he didn't pull the trigger. The only person mm-hmm. that is at fault is the person that pulls the trigger in gun violence. But I mean, if you come shooting at me in my home on my street, and expect me not to shoot back, then you got to be loony. Well, like, who pulled the first trigger? It don't matter. You came on my turf trying to do crazy stuff. Well, somebody come in your home, you got every fucking right to shoot their ass. You know what I'm saying? But they was on the streets. But well, like old dude was saying when he was arguing with Matter, y'all, what are y'all fighting about? Y'all fighting for some streets that don't even belong to y'all. Y'all don't even own these streets. And you fighting just because some, where somebody from. That shit don't make no fucking sense to me at all that is true game violence really never ever made sense to me i know dudes that was in the in the hood strong you know i know i know dudes that got out i know dudes that died i know dudes that in in jail you know what i'm saying growing up in south florida 30 minutes away from miami Broward county that shit got rough out there you know what i'm saying so i i know how these boys feel and stuff like that but so I know, like the the wanting of revenge, like you want revenge, you know. I have people in my family that got uh, that I lost to gun violence. So, you know what I'm saying? I wanted revenge, but it's I mean, it never stops. Well, yeah, and and I think that's the point of this whole movie is that um, everybody wanted revenge for something. Like he wanted revenge for that. Okay, but then if you take revenge on that, somebody else going. So it's it's a vicious cycle that never ends. Yeah, so it definitely is. Then you get to a point where it's like, why why are you beefing with this game before uh, again? You know, like yeah. you remember? <laughs> you don't remember because they did something to you because you did something to them because they did something to you because you did something to them. It just keep going back and forth, back and forth, and it usually start off either over a female or somebody got disrespected or something like that. It started off at something small, especially with games. Because I believe personally that gang members are some of the most sensitive people walking the planet Earth. Like you could do anything that hurt their feelings or they feel disrespected in the smallest well, fraction of the way. I don't think it's that. I, I just feel like if you you kind of got an image you have to hold if you decide you want to be a gang member. Yeah. So true. it's not necessarily being sensitive, but it's like if I let you disrespect me and especially and that's it is also go with this movie. If I let you disrespect me in front of a bunch of people, then they're going to start disrespecting me. And if I ain't got no respects in the streets, then I can't be out in the streets. And I feel like with this movie, um, when they when the kids were in the courtyard, um, don't want to get too deep into that. But when they were in the courtyard, that was kind of one of the issues there that disrespect. And it's like you disrespect me in front of all these people. Like now, I have to do something, and that tick from tat is what pretty much made this movie. Right, the tip of tat. Okay, so the next person, uh, the next re- set of revenge we got is Marco wanted revenge for Timmy's old buddy Killy 
breaking his arm. I felt like that was justified. Like if you if you break my arm, I need to do something to you. Right. Like he was jumped. Like you had no reason jumping me. Like you you say that you and Timmy are boys, and then you see me again, and the first time you see me again, you want to fight me. Yeah. Like I, I'm confused. But like, see, this was where we di- disagree on who's the fault for this whole revenge thing. I mean, so. Marco was messing around with the older chick, smashing the older chick, and Timmy was smashing Leah. Mm-hmm. So Marco, when Marco got jumped, he was trying to call Timmy. Timmy didn't answer because he was with Leah. And Timmy, uh, when he got done with Leah, he was trying to call and see what's up with Marco. And Marco wasn't answering the phone. So the next time they talked and seen each other was at the school when they had that confrontation. And this boy, uh, Marco was going off on him like you ain't my boy and all this stuff like that you know you won't give me Killy's address even though he didn't know it but no 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 because i felt like my thing is you set me up that's what i'm gonna think like this i i met this guy today i saw you talking to him because remember marco didn't hear the conversation where Killy was like he ain't seen him in so long when he came out there you know what i'm saying i see you talking to this guy and this guy all of a sudden i run into him again and now he jumps me and not just jumps me, but he breaks my arm, well, and I'm I'm calling you, and you know where to be found. I feel like this is a setup. But you know that's your day one. That's your day one. Like, well, how you think this? Uh, how you think your boy Timmy got you set up, Marco? That's what I don't get. Because the thing is, yeah, he might have been my day one, but however, I didn't know you knew gang members because I keep telling my brother you don't know any gang members. And then I see you with you talking to a game member and this guy acting like y'all best buds. Then it's like, OK, well, maybe I don't really know you. Whoa. And then I get set up and it's, like you know, my arm get broke or whatever. I get jumped and it's like and you don't answer the phone and there's no explanation. It's like, OK, so you must have had something to do with this. So when he asked him for the address and it's like, OK, well, if pretty much, I think that was him saying, like, if you want to prove yourself that you had nothing to do with this, tell me where, tell me where he live at, so I can go handle this. Well, I think he was looking for somebody to blame too. You know what I'm saying? I think he would love somebody to blame. But either way, when they get into that argument and stuff like that, and then Leah tried to take up for him, and she she pushed Marco, and Marco went and slapped him, uh, slapped Leah, and that's when Timmy reacted and hit Marco. You know what I'm saying? I don't, me personally, I don't see no reason to put my hands on a female. You know what I'm saying? But why Why would you slap her? Because she pushed you. And then, you know, that's your boy's girl. But, you know, he was already done with uh, done with Timmy at the time. But that's what started was, the whole beat. That's the thing. He wasn't done with Timmy. He was, he was upset that he was hurt. His brother was pushing him like, yo, I done told you about being over there. Because remember, he got jumped on Timmy's side of town. So I'm sure his brother was like, yo, I done told you about being over there. Now your boy done set you up. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. sure that's what his brother was saying. So when he went to school, it's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Tell me where this guy is. And then when Leah kind of added herself into that conversation, which I felt like she had nothing to do with, she shouldn't have said anything. Right. Me personally. I'm like, that's between two brothers. You know what I mean? Right. They, they, they beauty stuff between two brothers. You don't need to jump into family stuff. You just stay out and let them handle them and let them cool off. And I felt like her jumping in there and then putting her hands on Marco and then Marco in return putting his hands on her caused Timmy to have to react. Because at that point, he's like, okay, well, I got to protect my girl. I can't be no punk and have him hitting on my girl. That's exactly what I'm saying. But I felt like Leah kind of, and she kind of, I felt like Killy started it. Leah kind of added a little bit of fuel to the fire. Yes, yeah, she did. But even then, even once walking away from that courtyard, I still felt like Marco still had love for Timmy. It's not like when they walked away, he was like, Timmy's dead to me. Well, at that time, he did until he got in the car with his brother. They had that conversation with him. Like, you a human puncher bag. It's like, you go to school with a broken heart. You come back with a black eye, too. You know what I'm saying? So. His brother got on him a little bit and made him feel some type of way, you know. True, but it was three months later before T- uh, Timmy got jumped. It was three months later. Yeah, it was three months later. So I felt like during that time, Marco was just trying to fi- hope that Timmy will 
I want to necessarily want to say come begging for him or to forgive him, but, you know, try to put more effort in trying to, you know, make things up to him. But because that didn't happen, Timmy, w- Timmy pretty much occupied his time with Leah. And that kind of made Mark a little jealous because it's like, okay, I thought I was your boy. All of a sudden a girl comes into play and now you forget about me. Right. And also I felt like for Timmy, I'm not Timmy, Marco, for Marco, he lost his family because like I said, he was going to Timmy house eating, you know, he, he felt that was his best friend. He didn't have to worry about this gang stuff when he was around um, Timmy. But now it's, it's like he was kind of pushed into the game with his brother because he had no outlet. He had nobody else to hang with. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So Marco wanted revenge for Timmy disrespecting the courtyard, which resulted into Leah getting killed because they remember they jumped Timmy Mm -hmm. while he was waiting outside Leah's house, I guess. But they jumped Timmy and um, Leah came out there and um, Marco pushed Leah and she hit her head on the concrete so hard that she died. So I can understand why Timmy wanted revenge for Leah, but Marco went to jail for three years. You know what I'm saying? So Marco right. went to jail for three years for killing Leah. And this whole time while he's in jail, Timmy is in the streets. He don't met back up with Killy and they start uh, and matter. And they start doing this gangster shit. And they pretty much just doing gangster stuff and waiting for uh, um, Marco, a.k.a. Now, now known as Bricker, to get out. So once he got out, they end up finding him at the club like we talked about before. And at that, at that event right there, Timmy stabbed Marco's brother, Switcher, in the back. So was Marco from for trying to get revenge for... His brother Switcher being paralyzed from that stab in the back because because the only reason his brother got stabbed in the back and got paralyzed is because he killed Timmy's girl Leah. So okay, so I felt like Timmy was not justified in trying to get revenge on Marco for killing Leah because the court system already seeked their justice on him, and it was an accident. But nobody give a fuck but about that it, in the streets. He already huh? did his time. He felt bad about it because, like, there was a scene where he was in the house and he was like, he can't sleep. And his brother was like, oh, that's because of jail. Like, no, it's because I, I actually murdered her. Like, he, it was an accident. And obviously the court thought it was an accident. So he did his time. But Timmy wanted his own revenge. Now, when Timmy stabbed Switcher and paralyzed him, at that point, you kind of push Marco hands to the point that now he has to get revenge for his brother. Yeah. But his brother, all right, he's paralyzed, but he's still breathing. Leah is not breathing anymore. She's six feet under. Like, so I more so understand why Timmy wanted revenge because he could never see his woman again. Even though she, uh, if it was roles or reverse, like she would be paralyzed and stuff like that. But at least this girl's still here. But, you know, but that. That was a three month relationship. Remember, they were there for three dating for three months. That was a three month relationship, and you ready to kill your best friend? I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, what's an accident, and it is wrong that he did. You know, she did die from that. You stabbed this man's brother. That's that was his brother since he was born, and yeah. you don't think he gonna get revenge for him? Yeah. Like, yeah, he might not be dead, but he. Sh- I mean, he ended up killing himself at the end because at this point he is he's a street guy. Now he can't walk. He's no longer a street guy. The one thing that made him who he was, he could no longer be. So at that point, like he said, he'd rather be dead than to than to be paralyzed like that. Right. So he did kill his brother. Right. So then you got Tyrone, which is Switcher and um Marcos, aka Bricker, cousin, come in the picture. And he's the one that got Switcher into the game. So he comes in and he's trying to get help help Bricker get uh, get revenge. On Timmy too, you know. So Timmy ends up having almost having to defend himself against against these people because Marco and um, Tyrone end up going to jail. They both get 35, 30 years, and that's why Switcher end up killing himself because his brother and his cousin don't went to jail over this same shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, because I feel like at to at the end Switcher 
and matter. They both come to terms that this gang stuff is not worth it. However, Swisher takes his own life to be done with it. Like the pain was too much. Everybody's life is gone, getting thrown down the drain. He he takes his own life. Matter, on the other hand, he turns state witness and snitches on everybody. Yeah. But he decides to um, help the youth in you know in the community to avoid that gang life. Well, everybody you know is dead. So who do you really <laughs> who do you really turn on? He only turned on the two dudes that tried to kill him. My Marco. That's who he turned on. He turned on Marco. So okay. So, but see, Marco, he didn't want to do. Marco did not want to hurt Timmy. That's my thing. Like, in it, he didn't want to hurt him. Timmy kept coming from him, coming from him, coming for him. So, and then he was like, "Man, like, then you, you don't stop my brother. Now I have to look. I have to come for you now." So the real question is, who is the fault for this whole fucking Timmy. thing? You say, you say Timmy. I say Marco. Timmy, because Timmy didn't. Timmy didn't have real brotherhood because that day at the park, he should have been like, look, Keely ain't my guy. You know what I'm saying? You my boy. It's messed up what happened. And I don't know where he lives, but I'm going to find out for you and let you know. But did he tell him that? No. He no. told him, he's like, I don't know where he lives. He lives somewhere on this street and this street. Yeah, but He how- gave him the roundabouts and he's like, we're going to find this motherfucker and we're going to fuck him up. Yeah, but He my- literally said that. Yeah, but my thing is, I don't trust you because you might tip him off and he gone. That is a crazy. He go missing. No, (laughs) no, that's been your man. That's your day one, bro. Like, if this man said, uh, he obviously he been with you this whole time. He was the first time seeing. It was your first time seeing him, like a couple days ago, to weeks or whatever the time was. It was your first time seeing him. You he never mentioned this dude, and you ain't never seen him. And this your man. You been always hang with almost every day. You know, you go to this man's house and all so this stuff. So then he should, I feel like he should have addressed Achilles like that when he when he saw him. When he saw him, he should have been like, yo, I knew him back in primary school, but I don't really mess with him like that. And that's how he should have addressed it. Not like, oh, yeah, that's my boy since primary school. Because to me, that makes it seem like you still got a relationship with this person. No, just because you live in that area, you think he knows him? No, it's just the fact that how he did not, he didn't put that distance. Like, yo, I ain't been around this man in a minute. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't but, make that known. See, it's crazy to me because I have homeboys like that. You know what I'm saying? And somebody come and hurt one of my friends and I know them, you know, I know roundabouts. I'm like, I would have said exactly what Timmy said. It's like, bro, I don't know where he stay at, but let's go find him. We're going to fuck him up. And Marco was like, no, nah, this me and my brother shit now. Okay. You, know now, and I'm you like, ain't my boy. Exactly. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I want to make this right because that's messed up. Yeah. So and I would have, I would have, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you my boy and I want to make this right, then I'm going to get you what you need. And I'm going to get you what you need to know. I, Not, no, I want to come. No, I, you and your brother can handle it. And I'm, I just want to show you my loyalty. Will this show, will this prove my loyalty to you if I get you his address? Now you got, now you got to get on the bend, bend the knee now. You asking because the man gonna, just got jumped by his boy. Like, I mean, <laughs> but it ain't his boys. It, it is his, his boy. boy. You must, and then okay. So if it wasn't his boy, then you end up. I come out of jail, and now you in this game with this guy. You and this guy running together. No, you come out of jail for what? Because you killed my girlfriend. Okay, but he comes out of jail, and Timmy and Killy are, is running together. So it's like, so this what y'all was anyways. Fuck that. So that's my brother three, was right. It's three years later. You get my <laughs> girlfriend. Okay. I want, I want your head now. You know what I'm saying? So it's a whole different story. And then, no. And then when um, Timmy had, was standing over uh, Marco and he had that gun, he pulled that trigger without thinking. Yeah. When Marco was standing there with that lighter, he had a flashback. He thought about everything um, that him and Timmy had been through. And it's kind of if he wanted to not do it but then he he was like man he went too far when he paralyzed my brother he gotta go oh yeah i, I see and the fucking timmy my boy timmy ended up dying at the end when he was just trying to get revenge no tim was doing too much all right so lesson blessing or curse i'm gonna say it was a blessing i loved it yeah i say it was a blessing and a lesson it was a good movie you know my boy rap man at Rap Man uh, on Instagram, he did his thing on this movie. And I think he really taught us a lot about, like, game violence. Nobody wins. He said that. Nobody wins in this game violence. So, 
Yep. I really like the movie. It was good. So next week, we are streaming on Hulu again. It's Rent a Pal on Hulu. Trust me, I didn't pick this movie. This is Twinkin's <laughs> idea. So we're going to see what this movie is about. We're going to just catch up on it, watch it, tune in, twinkleberry.com. And um, we will we'll see y'all next week. Bye.